Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Today we have someone who I think uh, you should get other people to come and listen to this or share this with, with other people if you're listening on our YouTube or on a podcast instead of our live uh, EWTN uh, broadcast. Um, Paula Umana is with us. She's a, she's a champion tennis player, the be best tennis player in all of Costa Rica until she began to face uh, just a, a sudden... Um, a sudden challenge to her health and we're going to talk we're going to go deep into the subject about suffering and how how what our response is to that we'll be right back with the bear wasnick adventure welcome to the bear wasnick adventure kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack explore the grittiness of manly spirituality gain traction in the virtues zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, you know my wife tells me I should always start the first segment with uh, the sign of the cross in Hawaiian. So we'll say that. Meka'ino akamakua kekeki ameke uhana hemalele. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. I just want to tell you, I you know, I, I, I kind of understand a little bit about what our next guest uh, has to say about suffering. She was a world class athlete, and for me too, I know, like uh, in my in my surfing in, in the championships I, I experienced in that, surfing was was more than just something I did. It was it was a huge part of who I am. I think it was the very nature God gave me. And then about three years ago, I got cut down with uh, prostate cancer. And when we uh, went through all of the radiation, and I praise God, I'm 100% healed from that now, um, that radiated some of my muscles. So then when I went out to surf, I hoolied my canoe. I flipped my outrigger canoe while surfing a wave, and I tore my hip muscle loose, and I had to be reattached. And, and, um, and then I was out stand-up stand paddle surfing, and my bicep tore loose on a big wave. And so for the period of about three years, I, I struggled with, with uh, the radiation and then muscles being torn loose. And then beyond that, three, three uh, significant infections that almost took me out, too. So yeah, uh, last week, uh, I paddled out. Uh, for the fun, on, uh, it was a big day, the first big day of the year uh, on the South Shore here in Waikiki. And for the first time, I paddled all the way out to the big sets. And I've been out, I had been out to the big sets, but I, I had felt vulnerable. But this time when I got out there, I felt like I was with my best friends, long forgotten friends. These big waves were, were, were waiting there for me. So, so much of the loss, and everyone that I know suffers to, in some form or fashion. Um, but so much of the loss can be almost like a, a, a loss of our own identity. And how does the Lord deal with that? How does the Lord, how does the Lord, what is the Lord's place in all of this? What is his will in all of this? And then how can we take that and make the suffering actually mean something? And uh, I heard Paula Umana's testimony, and I just thought we have to have her on our show. So Paula, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thank you so much, Bear. For me, it's such a pleasure to be here. And how exciting to be part of your program uh, and especially you're in Hawaii. Wow, that well, sounds so beautiful. But you know, my <laughs> wife's my wife's favorite place before we met. Now we live in Hawaii. She hasn't been back. But you know, my wife used to go surf in Costa Rica. Yes, and, uh, I, I, I was born in Costa Rica. That is my country. Now I live in Atlanta, Georgia. But I have never been in Hawaii. But people always say Costa Rica looks kind of like yeah, Hawaii. Yeah, that's what they say. Yeah, they go uh, co go to Costa Rica. It's just like Hawaii. While well, I, I live in Hawaii, and vice versa, right? <laughs> but but I, I was listening to your testimony with the Pintos. I love love that couple. They're so good. They're so kind to me. Yeah, so good. And you sweet. said something about your Catholic upbringing. Uh, you talked about your grandmother. And how she prayed the rosary. Can you can you exp can you say what what you said to them? Do you remember what you said? What you heard um, her you heard her yeah. pray. What did it sound like when she prayed? Well, for me, my grandmother was amazing. She was her name was Anita mm. and Anna, like the mother of our blessed mother. You mm -hmm. know, and she had fourteen children at home. Can mm. you imagine? Mm. It was a very holy lady. Mm. Uh, but yeah, what I say at, 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 um, at home with Jim and Joy at mm. EWTN, I remember was, 
my memories with my grandmother was every day. Well, I was not every day with her, but when I was with yeah, her, I yes. remember she used to go to mass, of course, every single day in a little yes. town in Costa Rica called mm. Moravia. Yeah. Now you can hear the bells and everything, you mm. know, when the mass is coming. But she was always like in the living room and, and she used to be doing like, and I was like, ah, yes, I, I, I know that sound. Is she whistling? You know, she yeah. was. And, yes. he, and then I saw her hands and she had a rosary. Yes, I have that same memory. Oh, really? I, tried, I tried to tell Your my children the other day, she'd go, psh, 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 psh. and then as I grew up, I realized she had a rosary in her hand. She had been praying the rosary, like, it seemed like nonstop. She would be... Nonstop. Yeah. Nonstop. And now when I see the generations, the 14 kids she has, the mm. faith of everybody is things that you don't realize in these new generations. Mm. We the need our moms to pray. The rosary, yeah. When a woman is praying the rosary for the, for the grandkids, for the family, it's so powerful. It is. It's so powerful. I'm, I'm here with you right now doing this show. I know a big reason is because of my grandmother's praying the rosary. Yeah, it was very beautiful all the time. All mm -hmm. the, but she was also very strict. I remember me as a professional tennis player coming home with my tennis skirts. Yes. And I ran to my room and put a long pants or long skirt because I say, if my grandma said, see my short skirt, she would say, you're not going to heaven with that skirt, you know? Yeah. Well, wait, <laughs> let, 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 let's talk about this. So, so you had a, a, a Catholic upbringing. Tell us about your tennis. Did you, did you, how did that happen? How did you begin to play tennis? Well, I, I grow, um, well, first, before I keep talking, I want to let you know and everybody that English is my second language. So I'm going to say funny words, but you it's know what beautiful. I mean? It's beautiful. We I'm love, I love that. I'm going to talk with my heart. It. It's okay. <laughs> no, I used, to, I used to lead the worship at a Catholic charismatic prayer group in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Yes. And most of the people there were, were Latino or Hispanic. And yeah. there's nothing more beautiful than the, than the Latin, the, the Spanish yeah. language and, and the way when they're praying and, and, and speaking and to the Lord in, the, in their native tongue. It's just so, so rich and so full. So I oh, love that. I love it. Yeah, I love it. We understand. So, yeah, I mean, I, I grow in a family of seven children and I'm the youngest one. And uh, I mean, we just cut... In Costa Rica, being Catholic when I was little was like, you must be Catholic. If yeah. you were not Catholic, that was a shame. People yeah. used to hide it. You know, oh. if, if you were not Catholic, you don't say it. People, mm. it used to be like that. Um, so I remember my dad came one day and says, I buy a membership for a tennis club. And for I was fascinating, you know. And he he bring me a racket, a wood racket, you know, at that time. I'm yes, 49 yes, now, yes, right, so yeah. Exactly. 48. Me he too. gave me a wood racket and we went to, it's called actually Costa Rica Tennis Club. And we went there and I started to hit the ball against the wall and I never stopped. You loved it. I, Isn't, I, yeah. I had that great love for tennis too. But let me ask you a question. You know, the score is like it's 15 love or 30 love. What would you say in Spanish if it was 30 love? What, were the, what would you say? It's just zero. That's bored, right? You don't say love. We don't say amor. You no. boring people. That, and now I, that, I, I would have I'm thought so you would have invented it. So, so, <laughs> so it wasn't because the word love was in it that you liked it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But in Spanish, as quince, cero, treinta. Yeah, that part was. Oh, that, yeah. I, I ruined, I'm not ever. I'm not going to interview you anymore. That's it. You ruined <laughs> my whole image. But no. So you love the game. Isn't it a fun game? Yeah, I mean, I, I just uh, fell in love with the sport and the game, and I remember I started to take it very serious. Mm. But tennis was a very expensive sport in my country, and and for me, for the family we were. I remember my dad. I I used to, then I get so intense, and I start practicing five hours every day in summer, mm -hmm. six hours. And my dad says, Paula, I cannot afford to buy you a pair of tennis shoes every ten days because it really? was really. Wow. So I remember my dad buying big pieces of rubber. I don't know mm -hmm. if you understand what I'm saying. Yes. And shugu. I don't know if you remember yes, shugu. Yes, absolutely. And, try, and you know, and put another New layer souls. New shoes. souls. Yeah. So exactly. Everything like that, you know, because it was, it was hard. 
So when I became national champion, I started to oh, dream. You just okay. We gotta take a break here in a second. But you just oh, sure. kind of said so. When I became national champion, you just, you kind of skipped a lot there. <laughs> but, but, but but we need to get back. I want to hear a little bit. We need to talk more about that. We're talking with Paula Umana. Her new book, 40 Gifts of Hope. What you don't know about Paula Umana is the, the physical suffering that she has gone through and victories that she's gone through and what she still endures and how she's the lessons she's learned from this. We'll be right back with our guest, Paula Umana. Paula, where can they find your book? Well, uh, you can go to my page, paulaspeaker.com, if you want me to speak in your church. You do, well, and which you do, you do want to have her speak. And hopefully in Hawaii one day. <laughs> yeah, we need you here. paulaspeaker.com, and you can find there my book. My book is also in Amazon, uh, 40 Gifts of Hope, and it has the approval of the Archbishop of Atlanta, Reverend Harmeyer. So That's awesome. That's awesome. It's under the church. Yeah. We're talking with Paulo Umana. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bear's Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion. Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I just want to remind all the men there to go to deepadventure.com and join the man cave. Uh, if you're a knuckle dragger, if you're a bit of a Neanderthal, uh, then you belong with us in the, in the man cave. It's, it's kind of like the cave of Adullam, uh, where David, uh, when he was on the run from King Saul, it said all the men kind of joined him there in this big cave. They, they were, uh, if they were running from the law or if they owed someone money or maybe they were running from their mother-in-law, I don't know, but they would, they would go to the cave of Adullam and there they formed each other and God formed them into the mighty men of valor. And so that's what the man cave is. It's, I just say we're all bozos on the same bus. We all need each other's help. We encourage each other, challenge each other, and we learn from each other. And then also there, if you, uh, when you join the Man Cave, you also get access to uh, the three-year curriculum, uh, Bear School of Manliness. So it's a great thing, by the way, for fathers to join. You'll go through with the other men, but you can also get, uh, um, you know, login credentials for your son so that you can lead them through it. And actually for mothers, some mothers are having their sons go through the curriculum, uh, single moms, you know. So, so go to deepadventure.com, become a member of uh, the Mama Bears or the Bear School of Manliness. We have with us today Paula Umana, who uh, is telling us her story. You know, the, the, we're going through kind of the joy and the, the high times in her life right now, and then, and then a tragedy came her way. I, can you, and her book is 40 Gifts of Hope. Paula, so all of a sudden, you're just champion of Costa Rica in tennis. That's all it, it just was no, no problems, no worries. You just skipped right well, to that. No, of course, of course. I, yeah, I became national champion when I was already 15 years old. Of course, after a lot of practice and efforts. And it was also because my, my brother-in-law, Jose, 
he went to the United States to study and he came back and he uh, created a tennis academy and he was the one who motivates me and says, Paula, what about, would you like to try to become professional? And I say, well, that will be great, but I don't know if I can do that, you know? I was already a national champion and I remember, you know, starting to look for resources everywhere. So yeah, I was always sleeping or eating or practicing or looking for sponsors. Mm -hmm. That was hard at right. that time. Yeah, hard. always is hard, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but but God opened doors for me. And I remember when I got my first sponsors, the airline of Costa Rica called Laxa mm -hmm. and um, a hotel company and other companies that started praise to help Praise God, me. oh, praise God. Yeah, it was not easy, of course. So with the sponsors, I started, I remember when the, the first sponsor says, they brought me catalogs and say, which rackets do you want? What uniforms, what tennis shoes? I couldn't believe it. I, you know, I, I it always liked that, but I also said, well, what about money? <laughs> you know, because you get yeah, all that, you fine. get all that stuff and then you sell it to get the money to go travel to do your sport, right? Am I right or am I wrong? Yeah. Well, on that moment, there were, they were paying for my traveling too. So that was yeah. pretty good. Ah, that's pretty that's good. Nice. But it, it, it doesn't last for so long, maybe two or two years or something like yeah. that. So of course I was always trying, but because the sponsors, I was able to start traveling and I became Central American uh, number one tennis player when I was 18 or 19 years old. Yeah. And this is when uh, the sponsor also helped me to move to the United States. So I came wow. to Miami. Wow, praise God. Yeah, yeah, I came to Miami. I remember my first time in the United States. I was so like impressed with the roads and everything was so clean and yeah. i remember how funny right because i grow with bananas and papayas and pineapples yeah and for me buying peaches was like wow what is this apricot and this peach because i never <laughs> or apples or grapes they're fruits that don't they, they don't grow in costa rica yeah. so it was uh fascinating for me at the beginning in the united states now i have been living here for 20 something years, you know, but on that moment. So I became a professional tennis player and uh, got opened the doors for me to travel all around the world. And, and I wanted to be number one in the world, like we all have dreams, right? I imagine yeah. maybe. Yeah. To you. Um, but then my, my best rank was 280 in the world in doubles. And actually, I remember one of my best tournaments was uh, playing with a girl from Hawaii. Iwalani Makaya, that was her name. <laughs> that sounds Hawaiian, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Iwalani. exactly. Yeah. Um, and um, so that was beautiful traveling around the world and playing. And I remember, you know, being very, very strong person. Was your faith growing then too? Well, it was funny. I remember when I was in a tennis academy, I used to have hard times dealing with other girls and the environment maybe there were sex and drugs and mm -hmm. and uh, they were kind of bullying on me and things like that so i used to live in key Biscayne in a tennis academy mm. with patricia pay my coach and i remember that when i had a hard times i used to grab the bike and go to san agnes catholic church that mm, was like three God. blocks oh, and i remember God. just being there waiting until the day finished like until it gets dark because i didn't want it to be in the house with the girls that oh, were so doing sorry. wrong wow. things wow. and i was just spending time with jesus on that bench and talking oh, to the him Lord. Praise because the Lord. i was so focused on my tennis but the environment was very difficult um mm. so yes god was always on my way and i remember being exposed to a lot of dangers because professional tennis it's also difficult in so many ways and now when I see back, I see how God protects me so much. The Lord protected you. Yeah, and he put a it lot, in you. He put it in you to, to make wise decisions. Well, we gotta, yeah. now we've got to move along a little bit because we really want to get into the gritty, gritty part of this. But you met this, this, this hockey player. Most hockey players that speak French are from Canada. But yeah. Serge <laughs> is, where is he from in France? Uh, he's from Paris. Paris. Oh, the <laughs> Paris. Paris. Where is he sophisticated yeah. are? Well, my, my, I met my husband because he is a chiropractor. That's handy. That comes in handy. Yeah. He, he went to Costa Rica to work with the Olympic Committee and athletes there for a year and a half. And he mm -hmm. met a tennis player 
and the chiropractor we met and he stayed there for one year and a half and that was enough to meet each other. I was very lucky. He was a very Catholic, strong man already. Praise God. Wow. Very traditional. And he he just proposed me and everything was very good. Where did he propose he, to you? Where did he propose to you? <laughs> you better have been in the Sean's de la or something. It was you? funny. He proposed me. He used to live in a... It was not romantic or anything. Yeah. He, was just, he used to be in Costa Rica in this... Uh, apartments that he was yeah. but my parents i was not allowed to be alone in an apartment with a boyfriend Good. so yeah we were there outside and he said he just said how our parents are gonna meet each other and i was like what do you mean you need to ask me something and he uh. says he says do you want to be my girlfriend and i was like am i ready your girlfriend you need to say the word wife <laughs> but yes. I do. Yes, but he, he, we were dealing with language because he was oh, English. And French. He meant fiance, probably. Exactly. He wanted to say fiance, but he. So I say, would you? I think you need to say something else. And he finally said the word wife. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> so, that's wonderful. Yeah, our engagement was very beautiful. It was at, in France at the church, in a traditional church, with a priest. Uh, in a very special ceremony, you know, mm. they bring the ring in a plate and the priest yeah. bless it. Praise God. Um, yeah, it, it was very beautiful. But we gotta, we gotta get keep this ball rolling here. So then, so you're married, and all of a sudden, there's five children. Yes, we <laughs> got a, married. Let's skip we to moved, that part because this is yes, where your we message is. Really and, yes. and we knew we we're going to be a natural family planning family, and mm -hmm. so yes, <laughs> we start to have a lot of children. Yes. And we have four girls and one boy. Um, and my boy, is now, he's the youngest. He's mm. eight years old now. Mm. So, yeah, I moved here and in Atlanta and being as a tennis coach. And, and so what ha we're going to take a break here in a minute. But what happened during that pregnancy? Your, was it with your son, your youngest, right? Yeah, my youngest. When I was pregnant of Charles, I started to feel very, very weak, very weak. And I thought, oh, it's just a pregnancy. Everything is starting to fall from my hands. And um, you, couldn't, you couldn't lift things. I was so confused, mm. so confused. Yeah. So after I give birth of Charles, one month later, I just wake up one morning and I couldn't feel my body waist down. Everything was gone. Oh, my goodness. Did you eventually lose strength in your arms, too? Or Yes, everything was gone. It was a process of, of a, that, ha that is starting on... February of 2015 and for summer of 2015 everything was gone on my body my arms my legs my waist and um, everything absolutely everything I was only able to speak a terrible neurological uh, condition attacks my body and mm -hmm. everybody was so confused about it it took them a long time to diagnose my my case they, they didn't know what to do Mm -hmm. um, at the end, the, the, the name of the condition is called CIDP, Chronic Inflammatory Demyelin Polyneuropathy. It's a very mm -hmm. strange, long name. Yeah, um, easy for you to say. And, and of course, uh, that was the beginning of the most difficult time of my life. Well, after we're going to talk, talk about that when we get back. We're talking with Paula Umana. Her book, I love the title of your book, 40 Gifts of Hope. And uh, and you know uh, yes, isn't that a beautiful cover? Beautiful <laughs> cover. What is that? What is that plant in the in the cover of the book? What is that plant there? What is that? Is oh, it flowers? it's lavender. It's lavender. Oh, really? How beautiful, Paula yeah. Umana. Uh, will be right back with us, and we're going to talk about her response to at that point. Then you were quadriplegic. Is that right? Yeah. We'll talk I about. Was. We're going to talk. We're going to talk story with Paula more about her response and God's grace in in this time. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is Dan Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up, Broken Places. Jesus calls us to all look for broken people and broken places, because he did. And that means Christians must be a people of what the Old Testament calls shalom, that is, peacemakers. In the Bible, shalom is more than bringing a ceasefire to warn people. Shalom means to bring complete wholeness, well-being, and harmony into all situations in life. Call to places where things are busted up to bring shalom is a serious assignment. 
Some folks are afeard of broken places, like at the gospel mission where I minister from time to time. Some folks often run away from brokenness, like those with uh, physical disabilities, mental illnesses, or addictions. Yep, hard stuff, partner. We learn in chapter 3 of Genesis that sin brought about brokenness within ourselves and our relationship with God, brokenness between each other, and with our environment. Yep. As his people of Shalom, we are called to reflect him by bringing wholeness to broken people, places, and things. And we've got a mighty fine toolkit when we stop and take an inventory, like a shovel to dig out another's car stuck in the mud, repentance and forgiveness to make things right, compassion that remains bedside a person on his or her deathbed, saw and hammer to build a ramp for a wheelchair-bound neighbor, sharing the love and the saving grace of Christ with a sinful, bound-up soul. But it takes more than inventory in our toolkit. Got to have, number one, a desire to look for brokenness, and number two, a willingness to respond to such things, and number three, the commitment to see things through, turning brokenness into wholeness. Blessed are the peacemakers. As such, Jesus said we would prove we are God's daughters and sons. This is Daniel Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos, Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps. Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Did you know you can watch Long Ride Home on Prime Video and that our new season of Long Ride Home is just beginning to air on EWTN soon and then also on Prime Video and the Armed Forces Network. We have 11 new episodes coming out, uh, all filmed in Hawaii. And uh, then I want to ask you guys a question. If you want, write, go to our website, deepadventure.com. Let me know, do you think Cindy and I, my wife Cindy and I, should start a new series called Adventures in Paradise, where Cindy and I uh, surf and, and sail and are here on the beach in Waikiki and we share our life with you, but also share, you know, of course, the deeper calling. We, we might call it Adventure into the Deep or Adventures in Paradise. Maybe you'll write with us and tell us what you think. We're talking at that's a deepadventure.com. We're talking with Paula Umana. Uh, she's telling us her story now of when she, she was a champion tennis star, a champion tennis star, a professional tennis star. And suddenly, with the, pregnant, the fifth pregnancy, she developed a quadriplegic uh, situation. What was your what, what was your response when when this first happened? Were you like, well, this, what was it? It was very interesting. My first response was the tennis player. I I felt like I need to try hard, so right. I was, I was just pushing and trying, not giving up. Like exactly like I was playing a tennis match. The tricky part was that it was not working. I was getting worse and worse because my body was attacked by this, um, you know, condition. And of course, it was horrible, very difficult. Yeah, I started to feel jealous of things that I never thought, people walking, my dream, everything yeah. physical became my dream. But my dream was not about playing or hitting the ball. My dream was just taking the trash out or hug my kids 
or you know help my daughter brushing her hair That's instead of instead awesome. of them brushing your hair exactly. right it's so it's very was, humbling and, and you feel guilty i start to be everywhere in social media instead of the tennis champion i was a lady all paralyzed asking for money to people and very confusing very confusing you are and this also, powerful powerful person loving person so maybe anger person. some anger with god of course like what is what is happening i think you're mistaken you i have five kids i have served you all my life mm -hmm. you know and a lot of confusion bills a lot of medical bills to pay so it, i think we all know when suffering comes in your life and illness is a package it's not only the physical part it's, it's a lot of right. things yeah um very very the, the the most challenging time of my life so far of course well, this this it's heartbreaking because your children too and your husband who you love so much and you're like wait i i did every i punched all the right tickets i did everything right lord why is this happening to me what are you doing wrong god but in your testimony you talk about three people that had a real impact on you during this time i don't mean to skip ahead because but you have so much to share what tell us each of those those three yes. people. I think the, the 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 one the youngest of those I think had a, just an incredible impact on you. But can you can you share with us those three things? Those three. Yes, those three of people? course. It's it's a part of the stories of my book. Um, but well, the, the book the, Forty Gifts the, of Hope. Forty Gifts of Hope. Yes, I mean three people. The first one for me, uh, before the young one was a priest. He came in my house when I was all paralyzed. And he bring to me the concept of offering your sufferings, but really strong. He gave me like a boot camp on that topic, you know? People don't talk a lot about it anymore. And I remember Mother Angelica years ago before I got mm -hmm. ill, reading one of her books saying suffering, it's okay to suffer, it's okay to cry, it's okay to be in pain. But after a while, it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't go anywhere if we don't use it for something good. So this priest came to my house and in 20 minutes, he gave me a very good training and told me how good it was for me to offer my suffering. So he taught me and I just, I'm just a person that has a very simple faith, you know, very simple faith. Um, so the way I did it was just putting pictures on the wall of people, of situations, of sufferings of others, why I'm suffering for. So, so for me, what he taught me was extremely important until today. I, because I today, want to help us yeah. understand this concept because so many people reject it so easily. Uh, this, how we participate in Christ's sufferings. Can you give us a boot camp? Sure, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it very simple so everybody can understand. We are suffering and it's normal that we don't want to suffer. Okay, so our first reaction is avoid it or try to improve the situation. Let's put it that way. Okay, but let's imagine we cannot do anything about it. Okay, so we're gonna manage it different. We are going to, to, to uh, what I'm gonna say is just be sure you talk with a lot of people and know what they are going through and know their own sufferings you're gonna think about people you really love that you would like them to have this go to heaven. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna make a big list. You're gonna take mm -hmm. pictures. You're gonna be ready because when the suffering comes, you wanna anticipate. So you're gonna have the reasons why you are suffering for. And that is amazing. When you get trained on that, so then for example, you have a terrible knee pain, something simple. The pain comes, there's nothing you can do about it. Instead of thinking, I'm so miserable, this is horrible, I don't know what to do, the medicine is not working, you have your list ready, you have the pictures ready on the wall, and you have a big pictures of the divine mercy in front of you. Mm -hmm. And you just say, Jesus, this is for my son, because he's an addict. This is for my friend that, never, that she can't find a husband. Anything simple, you know, and you just offer it, offer all your pains for all those situations. And what happens is something beautiful happens. When we offer the sufferings like that, I don't know how to explain, but a stage of grace come. God mm. give you a special grace, and then you, you, you feel joy. 
you feel joy in the suffering, and you feel you're in a stage of privilege and purification. Mm. And then it's extremely useful and beautiful. And mm. now that horrible thing becomes something so beautiful. Sacred. The, the problem is that when we are suffering, if we have tried to avoid it, mm. and plus we are suffering, then it's double. Double cross, double suffering, because you are not accepting. Well, you can, you can avoid it, or you can wallow in it. Either of those don't work. But to exactly. So the concept of, of the the Catholic teaching on this is that, <clears throat> you know, when, when when you become, when you're baptized, then you become part of the body of Christ, and if Christ suffered on the cross, if Christ suffered, then you suffer too because you're part of His body. And Saint Paul said something really powerful, like almost sounds heretical, <clears throat> when he said he talked about his own sufferings. You know, all the wounds that he had experienced being stoned and shipwrecked and all these things and he said I, that I may I, 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 I that I may make up for that which is lacking in the sufferings of Christ well of course nothing was lacking Jesus paid everything in full but it, it, it is that it is that we are joined with him in his body so that so that our prayers when we offer up our sufferings it's got to be about the most powerful prayer there can be when you when you fast it's a powerful prayer, Jesus said. Mm -hmm. When you offer up your sufferings, and, and not like you said, not just the sufferings of, of, of uh, oh, this hurts, or I, I'm lethargic, I can't move. Uh, it, it's the uh, what you're lost. I can't go play tennis anymore. I can't surf anymore. I can't hold my children anymore. When you give all that suffering up, then suddenly it becomes full of grace because you're joined exactly. with, it's just, how much of a more sacred place could you be than at the cross? And you're exactly. with Jesus there and you're offering up your prayer. Go ahead, Paula. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, that is the concept. Just very easy. Just, you know, have it that ready. And something else is this priest came to me and told me about a book called The Campus of the Sick. And that book was for me, was for me everything. Mm -hmm. Well, I have amazing news. That book was not getting published anymore. It was written in 1958 by a priest that used to take care of sick people sick with tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. Mm. So I contact Spain and they give me the rights to publish this You're book. You're awesome, Paula. Can we and get it? Can, where can we get it? It. it? Well, it's not published yet, but it's in English. It's ready. And it's called Imitation of Christ for the Sick and Suffering. And is that book is extremely powerful because every single phrase there is I don't know, but you feel empowered. It's like, okay, I'm suffering, yeah. but here I go. But you this feel empowered. You're no longer a victim. You're no exactly. longer living in denial, and you're no longer live wallowing in it. You're saying, I'm going to turn this. I'm going to be an athlete for Christ, and exactly. I'm going to change this. I'm going to change this into a prayer, a powerful prayer. Yeah, Th that book is ready on my website in Spanish, and in English it's ready. I'm just discerning if I'm going to publish it or if I'm going to give it to somebody to publish it. So that's what's going on with that. So, oh, so the first concept we, we, was we have that to we have to we have to take a break. But will yes. you will you pray a t twenty second prayer to the Lord in Spanish for us? Right now? Yeah. Está bien. Ven Espíritu divino, manda tu luz desde el cielo, Padre amoroso del Podre, luz en tus dones espléndido, luz que penetra en las almas, fuente del mayor consuelo. Ven dulce huésped del alma, descanso de nuestro esfuerzo. Ven sobre todos nosotros, ven, Espíritu Santo, ven, porque tú, Señor, tocas nuestra puerta. Nosotros la abrimos y te dejamos entrar, Señor, y tú cenas con nosotros. En el nombre de Jesús. Amén. Amén. Gloria a Dios. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com.
Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Baron Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. There's uh, one of the most sacred places you can be in this world is, in a, is, is, is embracing uh, a time of suffering uh, and making that time a sacred time uh, uh, in, in letting the Lord turn something bad into something good. You know, there's, the Bible says that God can take what he didn't sow and he can, he can reap from what he didn't sow. So all things can be turned to the good. And one of the ways that God turns things to, to the good is when we take our suffering. Sometimes we're suffering just because our, our, what we do for, for work is hard. Or we're suffering because we've got to wait for the elevator for 10 seconds. You know? But every little bit of, or big of suffering, if we give it to the Lord, it becomes sacred and it becomes a prayer. And, 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 and you, you know, when you see that one person that you're praying for and you go, they don't know how often I pray for them every time. Every time I feel that pain in my back, I pray, for, I pray a special prayer, you know? You, turn, you pray the rosary at that time. Turn those times of suffering into times of prayer, and God can do great things with that. Paula Umana is our guest. Her book, 40 Gifts of Hope, uh, talks about her, her trials. Now, I just want to, you, you, you were quadriplegic, and now are you able to walk yet, or what, what is your situation now? Yeah, today I have ambulatory paraplegia, which is from my knee to my feet is paralyzed. Mm -hmm. um, but by a miracle of our blessed mother, I would say, yeah. I, I'm able to use some devices on my legs and I can walk with them. Mm. And it's so funny, Bear, because right now I feel I'm living my dream because I am using everything that happens to serve the Lord. Amen. And God sends me to be a speaker everywhere and and one of my favorite parts is to travel with one of my kids we go oh, praise god yeah that's so yes, cool we, we were in new york last week and we have a wonderful time and and i also write a book how was going what to be able that to happen can i tell you something funny can i tell you something about this is that you know for me too um i suffered severe back pain uh, injury when i was uh, just out of college the uh -huh. type of pain that drops you to your knees and you hope no one comes to help you and I had, so I had excruciating pain for 13 years. So often I would not be, it was like worse than any dental surgery without Novocaine. The pain was, could get really brutal. And, um, and sometimes I would be in bed for days or weeks at a time and then it would get better, but it was always, always, always in pain. And, um, and then I remember, and I would say, Lord, you can heal me if you want to. I had great, I had great faith in the Lord. You can heal me if you want to, but you're not a slot machine. You know, if I just say, God, heal me, and believe it hard enough, you're going to heal me. I have faith that you love me, God, and you have a perfect plan for my life. Heal me if it's your will. And then one day, I won't go into the details of it, uh, I, was, I was praying, and I was miraculously healed. And I oh, knew wow. I was healed. I, I felt the power of God hit me, and, I, and, 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 I could, and I had, just prior to that, I had been laying out on the ground in the back, in the back just trying to take the pressure off my back. And then I... I, uh, I I was healed and I didn't feel any relief except for I felt the presence of God just fill me and I knew I was healed. 
uh, and, and, and I realized, okay, I, God's healed the problem, but there's still the pain needs to go away, the inflammation. Two weeks later, I didn't feel any back pain. And every moment of every day, I realized I don't have any back pain today. And you know what, Paula? Mm -hmm. um, I became a world champion tandem surfer after that. And that's where you lift a woman when you surf. So I can't give any glory to myself for that, can I? It's when you're weak that you're strong. And it may, may, may not be that God's going to heal you or heal you completely. As Like right now in, with Paula's case, she's well on the way. Some beautiful things have been happening to her. But, but even then, he uses the weak to, he uses our, when we're weak, then we are strong because we've got to rely on his strength. And guess what, Paula? I got to write a book too. You know what I mean is I, I won the world title and then suddenly said, well, you want a world title? You want to write a book? Okay, I'll write a book. And I was talking to a friend of mine, and I said, you know what? This is just a really bad situation because I, I, I might, I'm going to become prideful because I won a world title, you know? And she said, no, this is your platform. The God's going to use it to open the doors for your ministry. And so here you are. You say, and I wrote a book. Can you believe that? I feel I get it completely. What are yeah. some? Yeah. Well, I want to hear some of the gifts, the 40 gifts of hope. Can you? Jump into some of those. Yeah, 40, 40 Gifts of Hope is a very simple book. Uh, it's in Spanish, too. And I forgot to say also that EWTN has the book, too. You know, e If in, EWTN yeah. likes it, you know it's good. So you have it in English and in Spanish. Yes. Can you say it? Can you say it in Spanish? 40 Regalos de Esperanza. I love it. And de Esperanza, 40. hope is... 40 Regalos de Esperanza. Beautiful. Okay, tell us <laughs> some regalos, of the gifts. Regalos is gifts. So 40... De esperanza 40 comes... Regalos, has, the esperanza yes yes so tell so us what I, what I did in this book is you're gonna get it soon i send it to you it has 40 stories short all of them inspire and help the people that is dealing with suffering day by day and the stories are less than 400 words on purpose because when you are ill you don't have patience you're angry oh, you do true. something quick um so I interview people around the world, you know, in Spain, in the United States, in Colombia, in Costa Rica. 14 stories, it's me, my own experiences, and the rest is people around the world that I interview. So it's an amazing tool and present when you're dealing with illness and you need to say something simple. Or also there are a couple of stories that they don't mention God on purpose because sometimes when the person is ill, and they don't believe, they feel a lot of pressure, you know, mm. like I'm gonna die soon and everybody needs, wants me to be close to God. So you have to go little by little to get to those mm. souls. Mm. Because at the end, for you and me and right now, everything is just about trying to bring souls to heaven, including you and me, right? So that's why we do everything we do. So um, yeah, this, this, this book has been an amazing, uh, you know, tool for everybody, and and it's, it has become wonderful. <laughs> the, only, the only problem, though, Paula, is you're not a very good speaker. I mean, you don't communicate very well. I mean, you know, isn't she a delight, everybody? Paula Umana. Uh, if you go to her website, paulaumana.com, you can have her come uh, and no, speak. It's, it is pa Paula, Paula Speaker. speaker. PaulaSpeaker.com. PaulaSpeaker.com. Have yes. her come and do a, do a parish retreat for you or come and speak to, to your group. But, but so now... You, the priest spoke to you about about making your suffering mean something. Make it mean something. Don't just lay there and be a victim. And then wasn't there a, a, a nun yeah. and then a third person? Tell us what their messages yeah. were to you. Well, my Great daughter, lessons. Marie, she was No, no, was the, tell, tell, I want to hear your daughter's last. I want to hear the... Okay, the nun. The nun, her name is Andrea de Jesus, and she came to the hospital to see me when I was doing really bad. I was desperate. And she just talked to me super hard, super like mean kind of, but I love it. You're a tennis she player, said, you can take it. Yeah, she said, listen, what is your hurry to get better? Can you stop? And I was like, you know, isn't it better to wait and see what God wants to do instead of you out desperate the way you are? So that was super helpful to me to accept my condition, you know? Because sometimes, as we say in sub friends, we say, okay, this is it. But then there is a moment that we have to accept it, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so this nun for me was a eye opener, let's put it that way. And I know it was extremely important. After she came 
to my room and told me all that, so many blessings, blessings came in my life. Because you accepted, you accepted. And, and you basically, you're basically saying, not my will, but thy will be done to God. Exactly. Uh-huh. It's funny, Bear, because you bring all the theological and dogma through what I'm saying, because I think so simple. <laughs> no, so I love we it. Need to be, we need to think, think like you do. We need to think <laughs> like you do. It's so beautiful. I love it. Well, yeah. So and, that was, that's why she was very important. And then the third person was my daughter, Marie. Um, I remember going to the hospital, the best clinics all over the United States to mm -hmm. figure it out how to make it, how yeah. to walk. Yeah. And they told me, you're never going to walk. That's mm. it. So I came home and I wanted to cry with somebody, but I didn't pick my husband or my sister or my best friends. I called my daughter, my teenager daughter, to the room. How old was she? You said 15? She About? was 15, yeah. Okay. So she comes in the room, and I think I pick her because, because teenagers don't have a filter. They yeah, they'll say be, what that's on their mind, yeah. They are not going to be fake, they say. Yeah, mm. so I call her. And I start crying and say, doctor says I will never walk anymore. And I thought she was going to, you know, oh, mom, you know, she just laid down on the door and she says, well, what are you going to do, mom? Are you going to stay on that bed crying? You need to live your life. And I was like, <laughs> and live your life with what you have every mm. day. If it's one arm, one leg, two arms, but live your life, mom, live your life. Can I go and do my homework now? <laughs> wow. For me, that was huge, too. Maybe. I remember the next day I, I opened another tennis academy by in the phone. Praise and, God. Yeah. And we're, talking the with, we're talking with Paula Mana. We're already out of time. You've been so patient with us because I totally messed up uh, the time we were supposed to have this interview. And I was trying to text you at 2 in the morning Hawaii time, and you've been so patient. <laughs> you've been suffering. And that, that wonderful husband, Serge, say aloha to him. I hope someday I get to meet him in person. And thank you for being with us. Your book is called 40 Gifts of Hope, and, uh, and you can find that at, at paulaspeaker.com or, of course, any place you can buy books. So uh, I, I love that, Serge. Tell him, tell him Bear says hi. He's the most, romantic, the most romantic guy I know. Will you be my <laughs> girlfriend? Yeah. <laughs> Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Gracias. Buenas noches. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wilding Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wilding Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell. Thank you.